Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today I'm gonna talk about an MQ executor. And this is a little program that I wrote myself because I just needed it. So this MQ executor, the concept of it is to have one queue with workloads in MQ, the Rabbit MQ or any other MQ, but I've written it with the Rabbit MQ in mind. And you have a queue of works that you need to be done. And you send that into that queue. You have a bunch of these MQ executors that takes a work and then do a bunch of commands on your end and then returns a result back to the another MQ queue that you can have your results in. So that's the whole premise of this application. I needed it at work and it might end up evolving to something else. If somebody wants to help out building on it, they may do so. This is just something that I find pretty interesting and also very useful. So let's jump over to some code here. And first off, we have a command. A command is something that you can run. We all know the echo command and it's pretty much you send it a message and then it will echo that message back. And in this case, I have described this command. I have a little bit of a header up here that I say this is a command. And then I have the message that I want to have. And this is echo and message. And this is actually something that will run in Bash or in Windows if you want to. So you can create your own command files, CMD files. So they're very similar to the CMD files in Windows, but they don't have all the executing commands, just have the batch or bash commands that you want to run in this specific script. In this case, I used to have an echo. And then I have a short description here, and that's if you send in a command to the queue and you don't know or you have miswritten it, you will get the message back that this, this, this command didn't uh, exist, but here you have a list of other commands. So this is a very short command that describes different things that you can do in the system. And then we have the full description, and that is if you send in a command, but you don't supply all the necessary parameters, then it will not execute either way. It will tell you what it needs in order to run. And I have also uh, thinking a little bit of that I might end up have something like um, validation down here. And perhaps we could say that message should have a validation of it should only be uh, A to Z, for instance. For instance, something like that. I was uh, thinking about it, but haven't really uh, been working on it yet. But something like that. So that's the premise. You have a command. We can look at the other command that is a little bit more involved. Here you have the list directory. So you have uh, something that you put in a directory path. It moves to that directory and just lists it and give you back the result. So here we see that we can have a bunch of commands in sequence and they will run in the same uh, terminal and then return the result. And the configuration for RabbitMQ, here we have a template for it. You can uh, give it a bunch of hosts, give it the port name, the worker name so you know which worker did the actual work. And then you have a username and password. You have a virtual host, which is very important in the RabbitMQ. You can uh, segregate the different messages that way. And then you have the request queue and the response queue. So you send something into the request queue and get a response back. Um, then I have a bunch of classes here. We can look at the command file. This is a file that will take the command file that we have uh, and parse it and give you back something. So it will check if it's a type of a command, put that in a command buffer and a description buffer and a short description buffer. And then you can get those back. So it's just a parsing of the file, nothing more than that. Then we have this command line builder 
and this it takes uh, a command in so what we saw in the first file here echo for instance it take this message in and then goes through all the things in that command checks that it's a valid command so is there a file that is actually a command that I can use and if not return that this is miss missing give me an available command and we also go through the message and replace all the places that we can find of a specific argument with um, something that we get from our uh, input and if something is missing then we get that back argument this argument is missing and a description of what kind of argument is available. So that's pretty much how we set th that up. If we look at the executor, it's not that much code either. Uh, we have some console output up here. We check for the config file and if not, we write it down. So the executor should have its config file in the same directory as it, it itself. And if it's not there, we will write out the template so you can easily um, put in the right information. So you don't need to have this config file when you start. And if the config file is available, we will read that config file and set up a rabbit host list and start the rabbit and then wait for a connection here or wait for uh, messages uh, and we will create this MQ executor consumer so that's the thing that does the actual work push that to the queue with the worker name and just wait for a shutdown so if we have this running and we push the button that we want to shut it down we will wait for five minutes until we actually do the shutdown in order for the job to actually be able to stop working with whatever it's doing. So we will give it some lead time to actually start, stop with the specific work that it's doing at the moment. Um, and then we have a, a loop here that keeps it alive and checks that it's actually alive. So if you go in, you can see this is actually running. It's not hanged or crashed and then we have the executor this uh, com consumer so it has a bunch of different things here we have a handle delivery so we will get the message up here we'll create a work directory in a temp directory so this is something that it will work on in windows it actually works with this kind of a path as well as long as you have a temp directory available in Windows. So this one might be something that I change up that I use some predefined temp uh, temporary directory in Windows instead. But this is working for now. And then we take the message and we will parse that as JSON object down here. We will acknowledge that we got it. And then we will handle the message. And if anything goes wrong, we will send that fatal message back to the um, appender again. So we'll always send something back if something goes wrong. If we have the, the handle message down here, it's uh, say, setting up a string builder for this std out and error. And it will go through and see that it can, can actually build this me, uh, command line. And if it can't do that, it will give us an error Y and that's what we send back. Otherwise it will rerun the command and get an exit value. And down here we have some nice output. So we create some kind of a header up here with the running version number, the uh, uh, current uh, worker doing the work and message back if we have anything like that. And then the exit co code if something goes wrong and time spent how long did it take to actually run this and then the full output of uh, so yeah this message up here is the input message of course so what did we send in in order to run this and then we have the full standard out and error up here so that's the handle message and we have something that could print a stream so we get an input stream and print that back. I will show you what's important by that. Here we have the actual thing that runs the command. 
So we will check if this is a Windows system or if it's a Mac or Linux system. If it's a Windows system, we will run the command exe to get the command prompt. Otherwise, we'll run the shell so we get the command prompt. And then we will redirect the error stream so it will actually send, be sent to the uh, standard out instead for error. So we will get all the errors and standard out in the same log. Then we will create a log file here in the work directory. So if we want, we can actually take that file and tail it so we can see what's happening as the command is running. And we will print that out so we have that as soon as possible so we can tail it. And then we uh, redirect the output to this working log. So the error stream was redirected to the uh, output and we redirect the output to a file. So everything, if it's just standard output or errors, we will get those in the same file. And that uh, process builder we will actually build. So we will start that command prompt or that shell. And then we have a buffered writer here with the command line. So this is inside of that shell, we'll run a bunch of commands. And we have a stream writer and so out, output stream here. And then I have some error handling here. And this is that if I get an error code anywhere, I want to return that error code back to the shell and close down the shell with that error code so I can pick it up in my application and show you when you, I send back the response that this was the error that occurred. So this is some encapsulation that I take the error code that the program gave me and exit with that error code in order to be sure that I get the error code back because otherwise it might be that it runs one command and then runs the next command without any errors if it's an error in between the commands. So I set this up in Windows, you take the error level, check that it's not equal to zero. And in that case, you will exit with slash B and the error level. In Linux, it's a little bit more convoluted, but easier to read, I think. Uh, we check if the uh, uh, output above is equal to zero and if not, so or, we will exit with the error code here. So it's a little bit more terse, but pretty readable as well. And then we will uh, run through the commands here. So we will take the command that we parsed earlier, split it up in lines, write one of the lines to our command line, and we will write this error handling. So we will interleave the error handling and the command uh, on each line and lastly we will do an exit of zero with the same uh, kind of notation that we had earlier and last but not least we'll wait for one hour so if your process takes longer than one hour you can set another thing here but i thought it was very important to have something that said if it runs forever we need to shut it down and i thought one hour for our workloads is a very long time uh, our uh, scripts run for five to ten minutes so we have a lot of buffer there uh, but if you have other work, then we can change that up. And that could be something that you can co configure in the config file. So there is some potential work to be done here to improve it and do other work here. Uh, so this is pretty much my MQ uh, executor. Uh, I thought it was a, a really interesting pro project to uh, go into and do some work on. And it has already been pretty um, useful in my work. Um, set up uh, on a server, send in some uh, specific uh, commands to it and just run some workloads and get the result back. And if you can do it on multiple servers at the same time, you can get a very good throughput and actually do a lot of work um, simultaneously. So this was uh, what I wanted to cover today. I hope that you found it interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you have any comments or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below. 
do you think this is something that is useful or is this just something that I needed for my very specific case and this is some, something that will never be used in, other, in any other case? Tell me that as well. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. And I really hope to see you in the next video.